Hello, I uh, shall welcome you to my YouTube channel. Um, I'm highly humbled for having you here. It's because of you that I'm always motivated to uh, make videos. Well, in today's video, I'm going to share um, the process I went through to becoming a UK niche. Well, a friend contacted me and uh, was like, uh, he wants to know how to start a whole process. And uh, I believe that um, this is going to be very, very informative, especially if you're a Ghanaian nurse and uh, you're watching this video and it's your dream of becoming a nurse abroad. The information here will be very, very helpful. Um, in case you're not a nurse watching this video, I must say um, you can share to as many people as you want because I believe you may have a friend or a family member who is a nurse or who is into the health profession. And this video is not only um, what I'm going to say, the person I'm going to talk about here is not only in relation to nurses, I mean, pharmacists, doctors are all inclusive. So if you're interested in this information, then um, come with me. <laughs> to go through um, some processes and uh, i'll say there are about five or six of them but in this video i'm going to dwell much on the foundation or the basic one or the first one you have to um um do i mean that is the start of it all when you are able to um, establish that you should be rest assured that um the rest are, are perfectly in place yeah so the first process has to do with IELTS. you may have heard of this before or you may not have but i want to let you know that IELTS is the first requirement if you want to work as a nurse in a professional organization in the UK, um, Canada, USA, Australia, Northern Ireland, yes. Um, one may ask, what is IELTS? IELTS is an international, uh, an international English language um, test and uh, um, it actually stands for International English Language Testing System. That is why we have the short form as IELTS. Yeah, this test is to actually um, measure your English proficiency and uh, anyone who wants to work with a hospital in the, let's say the UK, uh, Australia or whatsoever is required to sit for these exams. Now, I comprises of four main tests. You have the reading test, the listening test, the speaking test, and then the writing test. Um, why are these tests necessary? Well, um, they would want to know if you can listen, I mean, you can listen to any English message and understand. They would also want to know if you can speak the English language. And then they would also want to actually verify if you can um, read the English language and then comprehend whatever you have read. And uh, the last thing is they would want to assess you if you can write the English language. Now, this is necessary because you see, you are going to work in an English speaking country, and I uh, you know that the uh, English language is your major language. And as part of that, you can't go and speak your normal language there. So, um, it is necessary that you sit for these exams. And then, when you pass, you'll be given a test report for this form will actually um, be an evidence to prove that you are you can communicate in English. Yeah, it's as simple as that. So, um, with IELTS, you are required to um, have a specific bank score depending on the country you want to work with. Taking the UK for instance, you are required to get a bank score of 7 and above. Um, unlike our previous exams that we have, they are scored as E. And as you have, I, I know of nursing training where um, you have the highest um, grade as E plus, and uh, it comes down to A minus, B plus, C, and as low as D or something like that. Uh, with IELTS, um, the score is in bands. So you have from band 0 to band 9. Where band 0 is the lowest score and then band 9 is the highest score. So in the UK, for instance, you are required to have band 7 and above in the reading, writing, um, sorry, in the reading, listening, uh, speaking, and at least 6.5 in writing. And I also know of Canada as having band 7 throughout these four aspects. Yeah, so it depends on the country you want to work with or the, um, where you want to work. So you prepare as such. IELTS um, has proven to be an internationally accepted exam because even if um, it's your interest to pursue your degree or PhD or master's abroad, you are required, especially in an English speaking country, you are required to sit for this exam. So it's not only for work purposes. So IELTS has proven to be a bigger um, picture of um, or let me say a bigger picture to assess how one is proficient in the English language. So without talking much, uh, what I want to say is that um, if it's your interest of pursuing your nursing career in the UK, in Canada, Australia, your first step starts with IELTS. You see, uh, most people who have written the sounds may um, have many stories to share, especially me for instance. Um, I've shared most of my stories on my channel um, as to how I passed IELTS and uh, all of that. So, um, if you want to know much about IELTS, I will entreat you to follow my channel. I mean, I have a YouTube channel where I talk extensively about these exams because 
I think I have to share the positive stories with people. I believe that there are people out there like me who also um, who, are, who are aspiring to work in the uh, their dream hospital abroad or something like that. So some of these stories uh, will go a long way to inspire them. I also is written at the British Council. So we have one in Kumasi, we have one in Accra, and I think now we have one in Tamale. So once you register online, you'll be asked to choose your preferred location. And as part of that, you'll also be asked to choose your preferred date. Um, I think I have a video on how to choose the right date to pass IELTS once and for all. So you can get onto my channel and watch that video as well. I have also shared uh, many stories regarding to IELTS, how to pass once and for all, and always have money, energy, and time. You can also visit my channel and uh, watch that video as well. So now, when you pass IELTS, um, when you write IELTS, uh, what happens here is that your results is supposed to be ready within a two weeks time. I mean, it should be um, 13 days or two, yeah, two weeks time. Um, now, when your results is ready and uh, you are passed, what this means is that um, you'll be given a test report form and uh, it's the proof or an evidence that um, you are good at the English language. So, as a nurse, I mean, as a Ghanaian nurse, what you have to do is that you have to register with the UK NMC. Now, registering with the UK NMC is not a very difficult thing. Um, what you have to do is to go online. I mean, we have the um, the video videos, UK, um, UK NMC. I mean, it's something like that. I would search for it and then we can make a video about it. So, I'm um, expecting that. If you're interested in that, um, leave a comment in the comment box below. Yeah, so you have to register with the um, UK NMC. So, now with the registration, they will require you to upload your IELTS results, which is the test report form. And uh, um, bear in mind, you can only upload the results when you have actually attained the right band score. Okay. So UK require a band score of 7 and above in reading, listening, speaking, and 6.5 and above in writing. So take note. So you upload your test report form, which is the IELTS, and then they also ask you to upload your um, Ghana NMC uh, registered nurse certificate. In addition, you'll be asked to um, upload the police clearance form. So once you have uploaded your IELTS, your nursing certificate, uh, your Ghana NMC nursing certificate and then police clearance and I think there's another document I've forgotten about that. I think I'll make an extensive video about this process. Yeah. Uh, once you are done with that, um, you just have to submit and uh, the UK NMC will contact Ghana NMC to verify if you are indeed a nurse. So now when you upload your document to the UK NMC, um, they will send you a message, I think an email, and that uh, they will be taking you to the next process you have to take. Here, they will require that you um, get in touch with your uh, home NMC. So for instance, Ghana NMC, and I uh, have to get a clearance form from the Ministry of Health. I think now the process is changing. I'll look into that and I'll make a separate video about it. You have to get a clearance form from the uh, Ministry of Health. And uh, on this form, I think there are three things you have to do. For me, I, yeah, we have the personal details where you have to fill your name, your telephone number, email, and other details that pertains to you. And then we have a column where you have to um, give out to, let's see your, um, your employer or probably where you work and uh, the nursing manager or whoever you think is in charge of the place will have to also fill um, her color. Now when that is done, you have to take, um, there's a portion for your school principal to also fill. You have to also take it to your school to have that done. Now, um, when you have filled all the columns, you have to submit the form to the Ministry of Health for endorsement. Yeah, the requirement is very necessary because they don't know if you have probably saved all the three or four years of fund um, per the allowance um, you received. When the endorsement has been done at the Ministry of Health, what I've been saying is that um, you will have to take it to Ghana NMC. Yeah. And uh, um, for the verification to be done, I mean, when I say the verification, what I'm trying to mean is that for Ghana NMC to say yes to UK NMC that you are indeed a nurse, you have to pay a fee. Now, once the verification has been done and uh, Ghana NMC has declared to UK NMC that you are indeed a nurse here, and the next process will have to continue. And that is your CBT. So the CBT here, um, you can't just wake up and then um, register. The UK NMC um, will have to link you to a company called Persinfu. Now, Persinfu would um, actually create an account for you, send it to you through your email, and then they'll ask you to register for these exams. So in Ghana, um, CBT is written at the um, total it's the total house, yeah. It's close to um, it's it, it, I think it's close to the moving peak hotel and also close to the British Council, yeah. Area, um, yeah. So you can register online or you can go to the police and then do the registration. Um, I won't even talk much about this um, exam because it's a failed exam, I mean, it's something that pertains to nursing, yeah. So it will only be, it's, it's, I think, it's multiple choice questions. And now I think they are going to review it 
um, the structure or the mode with which the questions can would change. It was a mixture of um, dry calculation. Um, I mean, many questions that pertains to um, the field of work. I mean, nursing. Yeah. So I also look into that and make a separate video about how the CBT is. Now, once you have cleared your CBT, the person will actually um, inform you and that you are passed your CBT. And then um, another important thing I would want to let you know is that once you register with the UKNMC, they will create a dashboard for you. Now, the dashboard consists of all the processes you have to go through to finally become a nurse in the UK. Yeah. So once the process on the dashboard is completed, you will see a tick, a green uh, mark there, meaning that it has actually been done. With this, you'll be able to monitor the progress of your process. Simply put, or summarizing what I have said, the first process you need to um, actually start your journey of becoming a registered nurse in the UK is to write IELTS. Now, the second thing is to um, register with UKNMC after you have passed IELTS. Now, the third thing is for the UKNMC to make verifications um, from Ghana NMC. Now, now, when you are fully content with that, they will link you to a person who for you to write CBT, which is not very difficult. Now, when that is done, the next process comes. So, uh, let's put up my next video as I share with you the next um, process. If you are new here and uh, this information has been very helpful to you, I would entreat you to subscribe to my YouTube channel and uh, make sure that you, you click on the notification bell close to the subscribe button so anytime i upload a new video you'll be the first person to get it and as much as you are subscribing don't forget to share this video and then leave a comment so thank you very much hope to see you in my next video